So last week I was looking for a little Framer Motion demo to play with, and uh, one of my favorite new controls on iOS 16 is the scrubber that's used to control progress playback, you know, in podcasts, videos, and even for the volume control. And um, when I first noticed this when the iOS uh, upgraded, I thought it would be a really cool control to recreate with Framer Motion. I thought it'd be pretty easy. I started thinking about how I was going to make it uh, using the APIs, and so that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. And if you like uh, this video here, I actually just finished the last video in my Framer Motion course. We went ahead and published it kind of uh, a few episodes in over on our new website, buildui.com. So uh, if you like what you see here, you can check that out and I'm gonna have a more comprehensive video talking about that course soon. But today, uh, I'm gonna kind of do a speed run version of this. So I'm not gonna code code it each piece, but I will put the, re uh, the repo up on GitHub so you can have a look at the code. But uh, without any further ado, let's go ahead and kick this off and I'll talk through uh, all the interesting parts. So I've got my new Next app here and uh, I'm just kind of removing the defaults and installing Tailwind. Setting up my globals, um, choosing my shade of gray and then uh, I'm gonna start making a little iPhone background here. Now one little trick for my layouts I like to do these days is to use height 100% on everything. I find that the height screen and the min height screen stuff cause a lot of issues on mobile devices and even different browsers and different operating systems with scroll bar width. So I, I kind of stick with height 100% these days. That's just a little tip that I started using. And um, here you can see I'm starting to build the elements needed for the scrubber. I'm using um, a background white with 20% opacity for the background, and then just Flexbox to kind of style and uh, lay this out. And uh, the actual progress bar is absolutely positioned so that its width can just be between zero and 100% and fill up that background. And so uh, I went ahead and turned this div into a motion div, which is how you use Framer Motion. And uh, I'm playing with the width here and how I want this to work. So one of the interesting things about this is on iOS, when you engage with the control, uh, it actually scales up and the width changes and that pushes the surrounding elements. So I'm kind of playing with figuring out uh, whether the container should take up the full width or whether I should actually just use width animation so that when we hover, which is kind of how I'm simulating the touch interaction on, on mobile, whether it should change the actual width of the control or whether the parent should kind of take up the amount of space that the control will ever, ever fill up. And I'm pretty sure I land on using the width. So initially the width is actually 90%. Um, and then I expand it to 100%. And uh, since I'm using width instead of like a layout animation or scale, it will actually move the surrounding elements. And so there you can see uh, the basis for the animation. We start with a 90% width and then we expand it to 100% in the final height. Now I'm adding a little bit of buffer so that you don't have to hover right over the bar. And then uh, I'm starting to work on the actual progress here. Now, let me pause this and just point out um, the progress is going to be a value uh, between zero and one for zero and hundred percent. And then in Framer Motion, I wanna basically convert that into a width uh, between zero and hundred percent as a string. And Framer Motion provides these really cool hooks, use transform, which basically let you turn any motion value uh, into a string because motion values, the trick with how Framer Motion works is that they update outside of React's render cycle. And so this is a nice, little way to turn any kind of uh, value that you have that's like a root value or like a prop you would pass into a component into something you can use in CSS. And so once I make this work, we have our progress, which I can now set in different ways and we see it transforms to 20%, 80%, and that's kind of the basis of how this visually is gonna play out. So now I'm uh, kind of exploring the different props we have uh, and when to trigger this. and uh, Frame of Motion has this pan gesture built in, which is gonna work on both mobile and desktop. And it's gonna be the basis for how we actually update that motion value using progress.set. 
Here I'm trying to figure out kind of how to initiate the interaction. So is it gonna be hover? Is it gonna be mouse over? And uh, it looks like mouse enter works nicely right here. And then we can see in the console, we get a pan response that whenever we pan, we get all this information about how far our mouse has moved. And so uh, I'll pause it again right here. The next trick is gonna be basically when we uh, point or enter and we start hovering, we expand the control. And then when we pan, which is either when we touch on the, um, on the device, on a mobile device with our finger, or we press mouse down with a, a mouse and start dragging, you're gonna see all of these different um, values we get from this uh, info argument. And what we're interested in is the delta. So every time we move it, we're getting a certain amount of pixels that we've panned, either with our thumb or the mouse. And then our job up here is to transform that primitive value of the pixels that we've panned into a progress, into a percentage, because all of our calculations here are based on percent so that this control could be you know, extracted into a reusable component and put anywhere no matter how big the container is. And now I've gone ahead and installed React Use Measure. So the way we're actually gonna convert those pixels into a percentage, well, if I've moved 30 pixels to the right or 17 pixels to the left, I need to know how um, many pixels the overall progress bar is taking up so I can divide it and get it into a percentage. And I like to use React Use Measure to do that. Here I'm calculating the delta in percent from the raw event into percentage just by dividing it um, by the width here. So this is a pretty cool uh, kind of a key point in making this control work. And uh, look at that. Now it's just a matter of progress dot setting that. And uh, it's pretty cool because once you're panning, once you've pressed down, you can move the device, the cursor pointer kind of outside of the control, which is exactly like it works on iOS. Okay, so the next thing was um, I need a, a few more state variables here so that it stays expanded uh, when my mouse leaves because I was using kind of on pointer enter and on pointer leave. But uh, when I'm panning, if I move my pointer off of the control, I still need it to, uh, to be expanded. So first I'm running a little clamp function so I can just clamp this to zero and a hundred. And uh, here I'm logging the, the change of our progress. So we can see there it stops at zero and a hundred. Pretty cool. And uh, I'm just parameterizing a few more things. And uh, now I'm using those new states here to define a new variant. So now I have this kind of both a panning and a hovered variant so that the control is expanded the whole time. So that's where those new state variables came in and those variants make it really easy to add that. Okay, now I'm uh, gonna create a new variable and I'll, I'll go ahead and pause this just to talk about this. Because our progress variable is a motion value, uh, it's updating using request animation frame at 60 frames a second. And it's doing that outside of React's render cycle, and that's on purpose so that React is not re-rendering, you know, 60 frames a second. But if we want to extract that and use it in React State, which we usually do, for example, to set the volume on an audio player or to set the progress of a video player, we need that data somehow to get back into React at some rate. And I'm just basically trying this technique where I use another transform to create a rounded progress motion value and uh, that motion value is basically truncated. It's basically rounded to like a 10th. But uh, if I have a motion value that's updating um, at 60 frames a second, but the value doesn't change, it doesn't matter if we were to call, for example, set state. And so um, I can basically use this effect, add an on change handler to that, and then notify React whenever it changes, for example, from 23 to 24. And then in the middle, when it's going from 23.01 to 0.02 to 0.03, and the UI is updating, React still won't be re-rendering. So I need a function here to round a number to a certain number of, number of decimals. I went ahead and pulled open uh, chat uh, GPT from OpenAI, and it gave me this nice little function here, and I asked it to turn it into TypeScript, and that worked out great. 
So now I have this round two function. I have a new rounded progress. And I'm gonna test this out. We're gonna see this right here. Now when I change this, there we see it's uh, to the hundredth place. Let's go ahead and make it to the tenth place. So there's the idea. We can notify React kind of cor as coarsely or as granularly as we want. And, and there I've just made it whole numbers. So now I'm making some React state, which I'm calling progress state, so that we can render it using good old React right there in the DOM. Check that out. Pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and drop a console log with re-rendering just to prove that even though, see I'm moving it between 45 and 46, we're not triggering a million re-renders a second. So uh, that was just a fun little technique that um, was an easy approach to this. And now we have our value kind of extracted out into our React state. Here I'm trying to get rid of this user select so that the, it doesn't get selected. And um, just to kind of tidy and polish up this a little bit. And I'm changing the uh, animation here. I'm adding basically some animation to the number as well, that looks really nice. So I'm using that same state, the hovered and panning state to control this. You know, whenever I am making a control with frame or motion, I usually like to keep it all in frame, frame or motion, even if it's something I could do with Tailwind or just CSS, because I probably have some easing curves and transitions that are gonna apply to every element. And it feels really nice and polished when every part of the animation is in sync. So now this is looking pretty awesome. And uh, finally, I kind of want to test this piece of it out where when we hover it and it grows on iOS, it basically is pushing the controls out uh, when it grows and scales. And so I want to make sure that behavior works. For example, if you were to use a flex layout and put some icons on either side, they should move as well. So this, this part actually took me kind of the longest time. Conceptually, I was trying to make the, the control like 100% of the remaining width, but it's growing from 90 to 100%. And so I think I end up giving it a hard value here. I'm actually doing some debug code right here. And uh, I think I have to use calc to reserve the space that I need on either side so that the percentage can work. Again, we want the, the, the control to be able to fill in the full space, uh, but then, um, if you put icons on either side, you want them to have a fixed amount of space and just move in and out. And so conceptually, the whole thing can't be 100%. It's like 100% of the remaining space, and then it can go between 90 and 100. That's kind of the approach that I use. So you'll see here uh, that I used calc 95% minus 32 pixels just to get the idea of the thing working. But uh, that was kind of the approach I landed on. Then I installed Heroicons for the volume buttons, again, just to recreate kind of the, the demo from iOS add some spacing, fine tune it a little bit. And then just disabling some initial animation so that when you refresh, uh, it looks good. And that is looking pretty awesome. They're, they're changing their uh, color to white when we hover it. They're moving out with the scale and the width animation or the, rather the height and the width animation. So uh, I was really happy with this, how this came out and how easy it was to use. The pan motion, uh, the pan gesture that's part of frame motion was kind of the key to making this all work, as well as the info uh, from that pan gesture with the measurement of the progress bar to turn it into percentages. And here I'm just making sure it works kind of when we zoom in and out. So uh, there you have it. That is the iOS 16 slider. Again, I'm gonna post the code here to uh, GitHub so you can check it out, but I was pretty happy with how this turned out and it uh, works well on mobile devices too because the pan gesture uh, is in frame or motion, takes care of both desktop and mobile devices. But that's all for today. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any questions about it. Check out the code. And again, if you like this, go ahead and head over to buildui.com. I have basically eight videos covering some of my favorite APIs, building all sorts of cool demos like this from frame or motion. So uh, if you want more frame or motion stuff, check that out. Otherwise, happy holidays, and I'll see you in the next one.